Hello everyone, my name is Sachev Chaz and welcome back to yet another One Piece card game video and today, in this video, we are going to be talking about the blue cards from OPO3. We talked about the red, we talked about the green, now we're going into the blue cards. I will be opening up a box or two of OPO3 Mighty Enemies on the release day 11 of February. So look out for that, I'm excited to finally open up the new set and try to see all the cards inside as well as see what we can potentially get from those two boxes. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribing if you want to keep up to date with more One Piece card game content. Without further ado, let's take a look at all the blue cards coming from OPO3 Mighty Enemies. Alright, let's take a look at all the blue cards and this is going to be a very, very interesting color uh, in OPO3 because of this leader right here, the lovely Nami. The lovely Nami is going to be very, very powerful. Uh, yeah, I already talked about Nami in another video talking about all the leaders. So link will be in the description if you want to look at that. But just kind of briefly summarize, it's a 5,000 power leader. And yeah, if your deck gets to zero cards, you win the game. That's the great thing about Nami. And all of the blue cards have a lot to do with milling yourself out. That's fantastic. And Dawn 1, when, you're, when this leader attacks your opponent or damages your opponent, you may put the top card of your deck into the trash. So that's really good. Let's take a look at all the blue cards starting with Usopp. So Usopp, this is, oh man, I was really excited to talk about this when it was revealed, but I couldn't get the video done in time. So four cost, 5,000 power, uh, no counter on Usopp. He has rush, Usopp has rush. Blue cards have rush now. And his ability is Dawn 1. When this character attacks or damages your opponent's life, put the top seven cards of your deck into the trash. Uh, forgive the translation on screen for it being wrong. I am using a you know, basic Google Translate for the Japanese version of the website because the Asia one hasn't been updated yet. But this card is really, really good at the minimum. Like if you play it out on turn four or uh, on your four dawn turn, you can just attack with it. But it's even better if you play it out on your you know five or six dawn turn, and then. You can put one dawn onto Usopp, straight away attack it to your opponent, and then mill yourself for seven. That's so good. And the thing is, I think that you want, like, Nami players want to go first if you want to have Usopp, because on your third turn, you will have five dawn. You play down Usopp, you put one dawn on him, attack. There you go, you get to mill yourself. So, yeah, I think this is definitely meta defining card. That's right. Usopp is definitely going to be a meta defining card. It's a great card. Alternate art's great. So, let's just move on. To the Usopp Pirate, uh, it's uh, it's a one cost, a zero power with counter 1000, and its ability is on play, add up to one blue Usopp card from your trash to your hand. So this is also another way to recover um, your Rush Usopp that we just talked about. So you can, you know, on your five dawn turn, uh, play Usopp, put one dawn on him, attack it to your opponent, trash seven. Your opponent attack it to your Usopp, you don't save it, you put it into trash. Next turn, you play Usopp Pirates, you bring Usopp back, you play him down, you put a Dawn on him, attack, mill yourself for 7 again, and that's that's the way you gotta play this. Really quite interesting, but this card is just a singular effect and it only gets Usopp back. But I think it will be quite good with the recursion because all you care about is the mill, is the trashing 7 cards from, uh, from the top of your deck to the trash. So I think this card is really good in uh, pairing with Usopp. The deck built itself. That's all I'm saying. Next we have Gaimon. Ah, Gaimon. Look at him. So Gaimon is a 2 cost, 0 power with counter 1000 with the wisdom attribute. And his ability is when you deal damage to your opponent's life, you may trash the top 3 cards of your deck. And if you do, place this character in the trash. I'm sorry to all the Gaimon lovers out there, but I don't think this is a good card. <laughs> but then again, if you want to get just that like last bit of damage, you just play Gaimon out, put five dawns on him, attack, just to mill yourself for three. I don't think people will run it, but maybe they find that they don't have enough mill, that Gaimon becomes an option. Well, let's take a look at all the other blue cards. For now, this card, slightly, it's below average. Wish it was a better card. Next up, we got Kaya. Kaya, lovely artwork, by the way. Uh, one cost, zero power with counter 2000. So for all the blue players out there, this is your new plus 2000 counter card and her ability is on play draw two cards then discard two cards from your hand this is what nami wants to do anyway this is just a i would say a straight upgrade to the mihawk from the starter deck you don't have to run mihawk now you can just run kaya because her ability is on play you don't have to attack and yeah nami wants to like, turn through the deck right so you are drawing two cards you know you turn one play you can play kaya draw two discard two you're already two cards uh, on your way to victory with Nami. So Kaya, definitely really good. And it's a counter 2000. So I would say it's a staple. 
Next up, we have Car Carnet or Karn. This is a 3 cost 3000 power with counter 1000 and it's a blocker. During your opponent's turn, if your deck has 20 or less cards, this character gets plus 3000 power. So it's a situational buff, but with Nami, it becomes like an asset, right? Um, yeah, this card I think will see some play, especially because you want to like prevent, you want to have a lot of blockers in the early game to prevent your opponent from like, trying to just rush you down while you're trying to set up all the mill strategies that you have. I can see a situation where you would want to play Karn in the future and then definitely get that. It's a 3 cost 6,000 power blocker if everything goes your way. So I think it's pretty good. Next, we have uh, Genzo. This is your 2 cost 4,000 power vanilla with counter 1,000. Great artwork. So let's move on. Next up, we have Zeph. This is the, I would say, the other than Usopp, the linchpin of the deck itself. 5 cost, 6,000 power with counter 1,000. Uh, Dawn 1, when this character attack damages your opponent's life, you may put the top 7 cards of your deck into the trash. So your attack has to actually connect uh, with your opponent, but, you know, you, you immediately just trash 7 cards. And its second ability is uh, on play, you may return one character with a cost of 3 or less to the owner's hand. They put the top two cards of your deck into the trash. So this is really quite good because one, you can on play return a blocker on your opponent's side of the field or on play return back something like a Kaya. And then you can just use the effect again or some of the other effects that we're going to talk about later on. Zeph is good. Zeph is great. The alternate art is a banger. I lo love me some daddy chef action. Uh, Zeph is great. It's a great card for Nami, for sure. Next up is Nojiko. Great, great artwork. This is like top tier waifu level. Two cards, zero power with counter 1000. And her ability is uh, on play. If your leader is Nami, return up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of five or less back to its owner's hand. Yeah, this card is great. <laughs> this card is just straight up bounce something of your opponent's back to hand. And uh, you can return Nojiko with Zeph and then play it again if you need to. So you can really like set your opponent's tempo like way back with Nojiko. I really like this card. I think it's an above average card. Definitely going to make her way into the Nami decks. I mean, you have to play Nojiko if you play Nami. There's no reason to not play Nojiko in a Nami deck. Next up, we have Patty. Patty is a 3 cost 5000 power to slash your attribute. And his ability is on play. If your deck has 20 cards or less, you may return up to one character with a cost of 3 or less back to its owner's hand. I think this card is good. Situational, yes, but with Nami, you can get to that 20 or lower uh, deck count easily. But by that time, you might be going to like the late game and you, you're probably only going to affect very little targets uh still there there might be like you know small blockers some like against zoro maybe some aggressive stuff but i think this is a decent effect but whether or not it's too slow to be played that's another reason altogether so i think it's just average next up we have boodle two costs zero power with counter 1000 uh he's a blocker and on ko you may trash the top card of your deck that's right this is what Nami wants, just a way to prevent attacks in the early game. And you don't mind if he gets KO'd because you're doing what Nami wants, which is discarding the top card of your deck. Anyway, you want to get to that low deck count and Boodle, Boodle does that perfectly. So this is a above average card, definitely going to be seeing a lot of play in Nami decks. So let's move on. Next is the number one Mami Bellamere, the, the greatest waifu to ever exist. Also, this card is so beautiful. It should have been an alternate art. Love it. Anyway, 4 cost, 5,000 power with counter 1,000. And her ability is Dawn 1. When this character attacks and your opponent takes damage to their life, you may trash 7 cards from the top of your deck. So doing the same thing as Zeph, as uh, Usopp. And her second ability is on KO. You may trash 3 cards from the top of your deck. So even in death, just like in the anime, she still cares about Nami and Nojiko, of course. And the effect still helps Nami, you know, get to their game plan of reaching zero cards in the deck. Bellame is a top tier meta defining card for sure, at least in the Nami deck. And it's a top tier, uh, top tier mother in my heart. So there you go. <laughs> Next up, we have Mary. One cost, 3,000 power with counter 1,000. This is your one cost, 3,000 vanilla. Love, love, love that he's drawing going Mary in the picture and the artwork. Shout out to the artist. Love it. I love it. So let's move on. Next up, we got Yosaku and Johnny. Said they had to share a space in one card. Uh, one cost, 3,000 power um, with the slash attribute. Uh, the ability is Dawn 1. If your deck has 20 cards or less, this character gets plus 2,000 power. So... 
yeah, it's a situational buff in their power for sure, but I don't think it's that good because, you know, you're not actively wanting to attack into your opponent's uh, life with, like, for example, like Yosaku and Johnny. You want to be attacking with, like, the Usopp, the Bellomares, the Zeph. So this card, definitely a below average. So let's just move on. Next is Usopp's Rubber Band of Doom. This is uh, the greatest event card to have exist. It's a one cost event card with counter. Up to one of your leader or character gains plus 2000 power during this battle. Then you may trash the top card of your deck. Triggered ability is to draw one card and trash the top card of your deck. So interesting. This card could see uh, some play for sure. I mean, of course, the the <laughs> Rubber Band of Doom is a, is a gimmicky attack in the anime and the video games, but I love it. But it's doing what Nami wants you to do, which is you know trashing the cards from your deck into uh, to get to that zero uh, card count. And it's a decent uh, one cost 2000 counter. So you can play it if you want to. I think you know the, the slots might be limited, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's some number of copies of this card in Nami decks in the future. All right, next up, we have Gomu Gomu no Giant Gavel. Um, that's the proper translation from the Discord. Uh, it's a one cost event card with counter and its ability is counter. You may trash one card from your hand up to one of your leader gains plus 4,000 power during this battle. Then you may trash the top two cards of your deck. The trigger ability is returned up to one character with a cost of four or less to its owner's hand. So this card, I think it's just a significantly better card than uh, the Rubber Band of Doom because you can trash two cards from the top of your deck. At the same time, you want that one cost 4,000 power uh, counter. Downside is you have to discard a card to use it uh, because it's part of the cost. But I can see situations where people will run this over the Rubber Band of Doom. Definitely for sure. Next up is Sanji's Pilaf. Uh, this is essentially Pod of Greed. I wonder what it does. Three costs uh, and its ability is main draw two cards. Okay, it's not really Pod of Greed, but Pod of Greed is more memeable. It's actually more akin to Divination from MTG. Yeah, three costs, draw two cards. That's pretty good. And uh, its trigger ability is to activate this card's main effect. So I think there may be situations where this card would be good. And in the words of my main man, the other decks, he said this. I can't wait to say pillar for game. And there could be situations where that could happen. Where you're playing Nami, you're down to like the two last two cards of your deck, and then you play Sanji's Pilaf, you draw two cards, pillar for game. Uh but yeah, I, I like this card. Whether how many copies we'll see play in the deck, I'm not sure. But it's good that we have a straight card draw. I mean, for the one free card game, that's kind of pretty rare. Next up, we have 3000 Worlds. Uh, it's a four cost event card. Uh, its ability is main, place up to one character with a cost of five or less at the bottom of its owner's deck. And its triggered ability is players up to one character with a cost of three or less at the bottom of its owner's uh, deck. This card is great, man. This card is, it's basically a smaller version of the Dracul Mihawk uh, uh, Super Rare from OPO1. And there's a lot of targets. I would love to just play this and then bottom deck a, a, a Kaido player's queen, for example. Just immediately get rid of the blocker. You don't have to deal with it because it goes to the bottom of the owner's deck. There it is. I can definitely see. I think this card is definitely uh, above average for sure. The only downside is it does cost four and it does nothing to, you know, progress your game plan uh, except clearing the way of uh, the field for your characters to attack into it but i can see this card being played for sure i think it's it's pretty decent i think it's good i really like it here is soga king this is the secret rare of the uh set itself one of the secret rares at least this is your seven cost six thousand power counter one thousand so his ability is according to the rules this card's name is also treated as usopp which is weird because what does usopp and soga king have to do with one another i'm not sure don't ask me that and his second ability is when on play we turn up to one character with a cost of six or less to the owner's hand then draw two cards and discard two cards from your hand this card is great in nami decks for sure just a straight tempo play. At the same time, you are continuing your game plan of trying to deck yourself out with uh, uh, to win via Nami's ability. Soga King is absolutely great. It is also the manga chase card of the set. So there you go. All right, that's all the blue cards coming to OPO3. Um, yes, we will be talking about the purple card snakes as well as black and yellow. I'm really excited to talk about all the other cards, but I don't want to make the videos too long. So I'm just I'm breaking them into different parts. Just a reminder, I will be opening up a box of OPO3 uh, on 11th of February. So look out for that video. I'm excited to share the opening experience with you guys. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. We'll continue on with the black cards in the next video. 
Anyway, till then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.